as always, box are helpful. Not necessary, but they can be helpful. And come on down to your back. And I am going to invite you to start in butterfly, a recline butterfly. So you bring the soles of your feet together and let your knees drop open. And then if you have blocks, sometimes it's comfortable to just put them under your legs just to support them. You don't have to. It's just as you sit here in this posture, sometimes it can get a little bit sore on your inner thighs. And then pick what you want to do with your hands. I might invite you to bring one hand to heart center, one hand to your abdomen. And allow your elbows to release down. And the hands are just there to give you feedback on your breath. So inhaling through your nose, feeling one hand rise, feeling the other hand rise. And then exhaling through your nose, feeling them fall back down. Taking some nice, long, slow breaths. Trying to release tension. If this is uncomfortable in your legs, you can of course adjust. I find it very uncomfortable, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. Again, the blocks can help make it more comfortable. As you exhale, see if you can let go of any tension, particularly in the hips and the inner thighs. Pay special attention there for a moment. And bring your attention to other parts of your body, maybe your shoulders, maybe your neck, maybe your back. And imagine breathing into that area, deeply inhaling through the nose. Feel the ribs expand, really notice your hands rising and falling, exhaling through the nose. And if you want to set an intention for your practice, you may do so. The other day I suggested the intention of a positive emotion or affirmation even. So to focus on joy, to focus on gratitude, something that resonates with you and dedicating your practice to that. Gently come out of this by just bringing your knees together, releasing that stretch. Bring your knees to your chest, give yourself a hug, rock yourself side to side, opening your eyes as you do. If you have blocks or pillows or something supporting your thighs, you can move them, but just keep them handy because you might find that you want them during your practice today. So I'm making little circles here, kind of rolling side to side in like a circular motion. So you go hip, back, other hip, and then down to the bottom. I think it feels quite good on my hips and back. And then maybe reverse that circle. I feel like you're kind of like a little egg on your back when you do this. And you won't roll all the way over. And come back to center, keeping the right knee in, hug the shin, let the left leg stretch along the floor, flexing that foot. And then maybe rolling the ankle of the right foot a few times each direction. And taking that hand on the shin, just open that leg out to the side. So without tugging on the knee, just gently putting pressure on the shin. I like to take the opposite hand on the hip to make sure I don't roll over. We want to create that kind of traction point from where your hips are rooted to the mat. So you're getting a little bit of a stretch in your inner thigh. And then adding some movement here. So bringing the hip across the leg rather, and open. You're rotating through the hip joint, but moving the leg. So nice big circle here, lubricating that hip joint. And just continuing to breathe deeply. Whenever you want, you can switch directions, rotate the other way. A couple of deep breaths this way. You could do one breath for one rotation. I find I rotate more quickly than I breathe, so it's about two rotations per breath. And come back to center. And we're going to extend and bend this leg. So hold on maybe behind your thigh unless you're really flexible holding onto your calf. I'm pretty flexible, but I'm tight right now, so I'm going to hold behind my thigh. And then extend that leg. Here my knee <laughs> crack and pop. And then bend the leg back in. And extend. 
and bend a couple more times, just extending. So you might find it's way down here, you might find it's closer to your body. That's fine. Extend and bend. Last time, extend it up. Then if you find you've got some movement you want, you can walk the hands up. Again, I just advise not to tug on the knee. If you can skip over the knee to the um, calf, the hamstring area, the lower hamstring, I should say, that's fine. And then point and flex your foot here, wherever your hands are, whether they're higher or lower, doesn't matter. And point and flex your foot a few times. And then we're going to work our abs a tiny bit just by lifting up. You can actually pull on that leg. And then you can pull a little bit more because now you're lifted. You shouldn't be feeling tension in your neck. If you're down here and you're kind of arching up, it's not so great. But if you use your abs and lift up, then you can pull that in and get a little bit more of a stretch. And take a couple breaths. And release that down. And then bend that knee, place the foot against the inner thigh, and then see if you can open up that hip this way. So the right knee is dropping down to the mat, left foot is on the mat. And then just sort of cactus those arms for a moment. And take some nice deep breaths here. Just releasing that hip, that inner thigh again. We'll be focusing a fair amount there today in our nice slow practice. And then let's bring this leg up and over to the other side. Again, a block might come in handy here so that knee can land wherever it wants if it doesn't make it to the floor. Keep that right arm cactus. Keep that right shoulder on the mat. And then just allow your left knee to drop down as low as it's able, which might not be to the floor. But if you can support it with a block or a book or even your hand, that usually feels better than having it just kind of like up here in the air. You can put your hand under there and support it. And then you can turn your head and look over your left shoulder, or your right shoulder, sorry. And take a couple of breaths there. And then release that, come back to center, extend that right leg long, stretch your arms overhead and give yourself a full body stretch, flex the feet if it feels good. I like to interlace my fingers and push my hands away. Deep inhale, and then whenever you next exhale, we're going to try to do the same series on the other side, if I remember it all. Bring your left shin into your body, flex your right foot, pull that left shin in gently. Rolling the ankle of the left foot, if you would like, a few times each direction. And then holding on with your left hand to your left shin, right hand on your right hip, just pull that leg gently out without rolling over. Foot's just kind of hanging. And then make some big circles with that leg. Rotating around. Continuing that nice deep breathing. When we do these slower practices, you can really focus on that breath. If you find that you're forgetting reverse direction, then just bring your attention back. See if you can fill the lungs each time. And empty the lungs each time. And coming back to center, grabbing hold behind the thigh now, extend the leg, and bend it back in, and extend, and bend. See how straight you can get that leg. For a lot of us, we'll find there's a little bit of a bend. So see if you can really press it away, straighten it. And then this time, once you extend it, only if you want, walk those hands up a little higher to the calves. And then if you want, you can climb up that leg. So if your hands are on your thighs, you can actually walk up the leg, pull yourself up, and then maybe you get to your calf. See if you can keep pressing this opposite leg down on the mat. Really flex that foot. I find if I forget, it kind of likes to float up. See if you can really actively push it away. And then point and flex your left foot. And if you're tight and this isn't working, if your leg is more bent, if you're holding well on your thigh, all those things are fine. 
you don't want to strain your hamstring, but keeping it flexible is really important to prevent injury. See if you can pull up a little bit more, one last stretch, and releasing that down, bring that knee in, and then let's open that leg out to the side, so left foot against the right thigh, cactusing both arms, letting that left knee drop down towards the mat, and just take a few breaths here. And whenever you want, bring that left knee up and over, across again. You'll see it more easily this time. So keeping the left shoulder on the mat, left arm cactus, bring that left knee across. And then what you can do is like right now for me, I want to be there. Maybe not. I want to be there. And as you sit here for a moment, looking over that left shoulder, what you'll find is your back will start to release. And then you might feel like you can lower that block down. But for me today, my knee doesn't want to go all the way to the floor. It wants to be a little bit higher. So putting that block under there is really comfortable and allows you to get the benefit of the twist in your back, which is what we're going for. Couple deep breaths. And rolling that back to center. And actually, I wanted to do a supine pigeon while we're here. So bend both knees. Cross your right ankle across. We're going to do pigeon later on, so I wanted to do a supine pigeon now. So your right ankle is on your left thigh, and just sort of press that knee away. So you're actively engaging, even though you're not using your hands yet. Just push that knee away to create some openness here. And then if you want, you can grab hold behind the left thigh and pull that thigh in towards your body. If it works for you, you might find that your arm, your forearm is near your thigh and you can press against your thigh to create more of a stretch. It just kind of depends on your um, body dynamics, whether that like, is feasible or if it works for you. Try to keep the chin towards your chest. I'll sometimes see the sort of arching of the neck in this posture. See if you can relax the shoulders, see if you can relax the neck. And there's just a little bit of a tilt of the chin towards the chest to protect the neck. And releasing that down, we'll go right to the other side, left foot across the right thigh. Again, pausing for a moment. Sometimes it just feels good to just use your leg, use the hip, and see if you can push that knee away. Planting your low back in the mat, belly button is in, everything's square here. Both hips are on the mat, both shoulders are on the mat. And then when you're ready, go ahead and grab behind the right thigh, pulling the right thigh in. And again, if you want, you can use the left elbow or forearm, pressing against the left thigh to deepen the stretch. And take some nice breaths. Inhale and exhale. Remembering whatever that intention was, whatever that emotion was. Inhaling that joy or that focus. Positive energy. Exhaling, letting go of negative emotions. And releasing that down. Hug both knees into your chest. Option to do some rolling like a ball here. So if you have any back issues that it bothers you to, to roll up and down, then you can just skip this. But if you want, you can use a bit of momentum to roll yourself up to sit and then really curve the spine. So pull the belly button and tuck the chin towards the chest to roll back down just to the shoulders. Try not to go all the way onto your head. Your head should stay a bit lifted. Keep that chin towards your chest. That will actually protect your neck as well. It should feel good. If you're falling back and smacking onto the mat, that's because you're not pulling your belly button in and you're not rounding enough. So make sure you make a nice brown spine. And then whenever you want, bring yourself all the way up. And let's come over onto hands and knees. So when I wanted to do some modified chaturangas today and some modified, um, not even full sun salutations, just the chaturangas. So go ahead and for a moment, let's bring our toes together, separate our knees and sit back on your heels in a resting warrior. Rest those, stretch the arms forward, rest your head on the floor. 
and make your arms pretty active here. So you're really reaching far away. You should feel a lengthening through your spine as you push back towards your heels. Palms pressing into the mat. Good. Bring yourself up. And I remembered I wanted to do one more thing before we do those modified chaturangas. So curl your toes under you. Now, this is not going to be comfortable for everybody. So at some point it becomes uncomfortable. Just relax your feet. But see if you can curl your toes under and then sit back on your heels. If it doesn't work for you, an alternative is to take a block up on its end and sit back that way. But if you can do this, it's really great for your feet. You're giving your feet a good stretch here if you suffer from plantar fasciitis. If you're a runner, like I used to be, you might get some pain there, so this is a really good stretch. Equally, if you have pain there, this might, you know, sort of, you won't be able to do it for too long of a time, and that's completely understandable. So make sure you're sitting nice and tall here. We're not slouching, right? Shoulders are down and back. And let's inhale to lift up and grow nice and tall. And we're going to do our lateral bends and our twists from here today. So releasing one arm down, it doesn't matter which side you do first. And you'll see it's a slight, I'm going to turn so you can see my bend. It's not probably going to be as deep of a bend as normal. Maybe it is. I find for me, I kind of don't fall all the way over here. If you can't reach the floor, again, your friendly block can help you. Or a book, or a pillow, or a water bottle. And then turning your gaze up towards the armpit. Take some nice deep breaths in through the side body. And release that down. And again, lifting up to the other side, whichever side you didn't do. Turning. So if it bothers the shoulder, that arm can stay down but you will get a deeper stretch if you're comfortable to lift it up and over. Breathe into that side body. My feet are beginning to hurt me. <laughs> not in a bad way, just in a, oh, this is not super comfortable, is it? Felt good for a minute. Press yourself up. We won't stay here much longer, just a twist on each side. Inhale up and twist. So for me, I actually like to put this back hand on my hip and the other hand on the thigh. Again, if you have a block, because you probably can't reach the floor behind you, I at least can't reach the floor behind me. But you might find that you can reach a block. Because you want to stay tall. I don't want you to fall back to find the floor. So that's why maybe hand on hip works better, maybe hand on block. Breathing into the twist, breathing into the feet. Back to center, inhale up. Lifting and twisting to the other side. Where's that block? So you're pulling back with this, the back shoulder pressing against the thigh. Good. Releasing that. And now, staying on your toes, we're going to sit forward in puppy posture. So pointing, placing the feet still the same way on the floor. Reach the hands forward. And now sit back towards your heels. It should still take the pressure off your feet, so it should still feel a bit relaxing in your feet. Stretch the hands forward. Really push back towards your heels. Let your head release down in puppy pose. And now release the feet. Bring the toes together. Bring the knees together. Release yourself down on the mat, and maybe bring your arms by your side in a child's pose letting your head find the mat. Breathe into that rounded spine, the upper back. If you really tuck your nose towards your knee, you can get a bit of a, more of a stretch in the upper back. And then rolling yourself up to sit. Now, as promised, I wanted to do some modified chaturangas. So bringing yourself out, hands, under your shoulders, knees under your hips. Warming up the spine first, because we haven't done this posture for our spine. So a few cow cats. As always, beginning with the base of the spine, moving up through the top of the skull, and then re reversing that base of the spine, belly button pulls in, head drops.
and after your last cat, taking a moment to really arch up into that, press into the hands, separate your shoulder blades. And then when you're ready, bring yourself to neutral spine, and then we're going to walk our knees back to find our modified plank. So hands are still under shoulders, elbows are turning inwards, but now our knees are further back. So now rather than being a tabletop, we are like a ski slope, but without dropping the hips. Keep the belly button engaged. You're still engaged in the glutes and the abs here. If anybody wants to, you can do this, any of these from plank. So if you want to do full plank, full chaturanga, by all means do. In today's class, I always do the modified version. Your option. So you're going to bend your elbows, hug your elbows to your rib cage as you lower down. Try to exaggerate, bringing the chest to the floor, the chin to the floor, then your hips to the floor as you lift up into your cobra or baby cobra, pushing back fluidly to child's pose. So we're going to keep this moving. So you're going to inhale to rise up to that modified plank. You're going to exhale to lower slowly down. You're going to inhale to lift up to the cobra and just keep the motion going as you exhale back to your heels. So if you're moving slower or faster than me, that's fine. Move to your breath. Inhaling to rise up, exhaling to lower down, inhale to your cobra, Exhale to your child's pose. And let's maybe do two more at your own pace. You can always just sit in child's pose once you're done. I have one more, so if you're finishing one, you can go ahead and start one more. And then everybody find yourself in child's pose. So that's a really good one to do, especially if you struggle with chaturanga, because you're going to build the strength. Like just even doing those modified, I feel that in my arms. So it's not easy. Plenty of you might find it challenging, and that's okay. It builds the strength, and then you can do full plank and full chaturanga one day. All right, coming back out one more time to that modified plank. And we're going to pivot this and come to a modified side plank. So I'm just going to pivot, my blocks keep getting my way. I'm just going to pivot my knee around, extend the opposite leg. So I'm on my left knee, but you can do either. Right leg extended, right foot on the floor. Left hand is under the shoulder. And then we're going to lift up that right arm. And if you want, reach it overhead, which should give you a nice stretch through the side body. Then if you want, lift up that leg. I find it's easier to have the leg lifted if the arm is straight up from your shoulder. And then if you want, in the spirit of working on our hips, you can bend your knee and see if you can catch your foot in that hand. And press your foot against your hand. If you kick against that hand, you should feel a stretch here in the front. Try not to arch back too much. I want you focusing more on the hip flexor, less on arching of the back. And then extend that out one more time. Place the foot on the floor. Come back to your modified plank. Let's do one of our modified chaturangas. Inhale up to cobra. Exhale back, child's pose. Just a breath or two. And then when you're ready, rising back up into that modified plank. Now I'm going to go to the right side, right hand to the middle of the mat, right leg flips around, left leg extends, left arm reaches overhead. It's a great stretch through this rib cage. Take some nice deep breaths, expanding the ribs, and then bringing the arm up and the leg up, holding here if you'd like. This should feel pretty challenging. And then bend that knee if you want, catching the foot and the hand. And again, you can just hang out like here, but you'll feel more of a stretch. You can't see me do it, but you push your foot against your hand, and that activates a stretch, and you'll feel that in the front of your thigh, your quad, your hip flexor area. You can just hang out here, no one's going to know the difference. But if you actively press your foot into your hand, you'll feel that. Couple of breaths here. And release that leg finds the floor, arm reaches overhead, cartwheels around, hands under shoulders, lower all, all 
whole way down this time into the mat. Slide the hands out, squeeze the feet together, and just come up for a moment in Sphinx. Shoulder blades pulling together, chest lifted. And release that down. So we're going to work a little bit here in a forearm plank and then coming to a spinal extension. You can do forearm plank from toes or from knees. I'm going to do it from my knees today. Excuse me, my mat. Um, I mean, I'm going to do it from my toes today, but you can do it from your knees if you'd like. It's up to you. So forearms find the floor, palms find the floor, and then pop up. So you're either here on your knees or you're here on your toes. And we're just going to hold it. For five, for four, for three, two, last one, lower that down. Option to keep your arms by your side, slightly easier. Option to extend your arms overhead, slightly harder. Squeeze the legs together, lift the arms, lift the legs, and hold it for five, four, three, two, and one. Slide the hands back, back to your forearm plank from toes or knees. Deep inhale, contracting the belly button, contracting the glutes. Five, four, three, two, and one, and lower down. And lifting up, same thing. Hands can come by your side. In fact, whatever you did last time, do something different. So if your arms were here, try reaching overhead. If your arms were overhead, this time try having them by your side. You'll notice it just feels slightly different. We'll do something even more different next time. And release that down. Last time on your forearm plank. So this is just a forearm plank, but I have dubbed this the Ruth Bader Ginsburg plank because she was doing this up until practically her death, I believe. I believe so. My goal is to also be doing this when I'm 87 and hopefully when I'm 97. Five, four, three, two. Last one, lowering down, challenge option here. Squeeze the glutes. At any point, you can leave your legs on the floor and not lift. Arms by your side in your cactus, lifting the chest, lifting the legs, and then option to reach overhead and pull back. Reach overhead, squeeze the shoulder blades together for three. Inhale two. Inhale one. And feet on the floor, hands on the floor, push up and back, child's pose. Knees together, feet together, arms reaching forward, head finds the mat. Inhaling and exhaling. And rising up, hands and knees. Step your right foot forward. Find yourself in a runner's lunge. Curl the back, toes under, pressing up. Again, if this is a challenge for you, I recommend you put hands on hands, blocks rather, under your hands. You can also keep your back knee on the mat. That's fine. You'll get more of a stretch in your hamstring if you can lift that knee up. Deep inhale. We're going to press this up to a, a um, high plank. High plank. High lunge. So, pushing up. Find your balance. Hands at heart center. If you want, if you feel stable, extend the arms overhead. See if you can push back through that back heel, creating some stretch in that hamstring. Good. Releasing that hand to the mat, we're going to come to pigeon. So that right foot's going to cross the body and then lower it down. Left leg's going to extend behind the body, foot finds the floor. See how much you can stretch back first. Take a moment here, noticing this right glute. If you tend to roll onto it and sit, we don't want to do that. So it's preferable to put a block or something on you to support yourself. And then if you find you don't need it, you can stay here. And then if you'd like, you can take this forward, releasing onto the mat. I like to make a little pillow with my hands, but there's no rule about what you do with your hands. You can stretch them out in front. Do whatever works. Take some nice deep breaths.
Noticing your hips here. And then pushing yourself up. Bend the back knee. Flex your foot. Point your foot. And release it back down. And again, bend it up. Flex. Point. Flex. And release. Last time, bend it up. Flex. Point. <laughs> flex. Point. Flex. My mouth said one thing and my foot did the exact opposite. And lower that down. Curl the back toe under. So this is going to be our, your optional downward facing dog. If you don't want to do down dog, you can just come to all fours or to child pose. But if you want to do down dog, you're going to press into that back foot and kick all the way up to a three-legged down dog. Bend that top leg. Drop your right foot towards your left side. Now you're opening your hip flexor. So it's a nice counter pose to what we just did for anybody who feels like they are able to do down dog. And then place that foot down. Separate your feet so they're mat distance apart. Keeping your right hand in the mat, take your left hand and grab your calf or your ankle, or maybe it just finds the mat if you can't reach all the way to your leg. Turn and look up past your right armpit in a down dog stretch, or twist rather. Inhaling and exhaling. Good. Releasing that, step the feet back together, bring yourself out into a plank, dropping down to knees, modified chaturanga, chest, chin, and hips. Inhale up, exhale back to child's pose, just for a breath or two. And then when you're ready, coming back to your all fours. Step your left foot forward this time, finding your runner's lunge on this side, so curling the toes under, pressing that right heel away. Double check that your knee is over ankle. If your foot's way back here, that's not great for your knee, so step that left foot all the way forward. And then when you're ready, press into that back heel, or your back foot, the ball of your foot. Push into your hands to help you lift up and find a high lunge. And if you're able, if you're stable, lift those arms up, pulling the shoulder blades down into their back pockets, finding that focal point in front of you, holding and breathing. And then bring the hands to the mat, bring the left foot across the body, release down, coming to your pigeon on this side, extend the right leg behind you. Take a moment here to sit up nice and tall. Pull the shoulder blades together, lift the chest up. Place that block under your glute if you're rolling onto your hip. Stay here for a moment. I like to think of this as proud pigeon with your breast puffed out, looking at the sun. And then if you feel like you want to, you can come down here into your resting pigeon. Once again, placing your arms wherever is comfortable. Breathing into the hip, breathing into the back, trying to let go of tension. And then when you're ready, pressing yourself up. Same as we did on the other side, bending that knee, flex the foot, point the foot, flex the foot, and release. Bend it, flex, point. Flex, release. Last time, flex, point, flex, and release. Same option, you can just come to all fours or child's pose or press into that right ball of your right foot. Kick up to a three-legged downward facing dog. Bend the left knee, drop the foot towards the opposite side. Stacking your hips, opening up the left hip and pelvis. And then placing that foot down, separating your feet, mat distance apart, taking your right hand, reaching back for your left calf or thigh or ankle or the mat, if that's where your hand lands. 
Looking past the left armpit and your down dog stretch on this side. Down dog twist. I don't know why I keep calling it a stretch. I mean, it is a stretch. But more importantly, it's one of our twists. Come back to your downward facing dog. And then step your right foot all the way forward and press up once again to that runner, so that high lunge. So pushing through the back heel, bringing hands to heart center, chest nice and lifted. And then we're going to bring left elbow to the top of the left thigh. Now it's your choice if you want to take this deeper. If that left elbow and arm slides down your leg, hands stay at heart center. You can also drop your back knee to the mat here. And then if you want, see if you can place that left hand on the floor and the right arm extends. And then finally, if you're stable, turning and looking towards that right hand. And then bring both hands to the mat. Step the right foot back, drop down to your knees. Modified Chaturanga. Inhale up to Cobra, curl the toes under. Last optional downward facing dog, heels towards the mat. And then step that left foot all the way forward, coming to our high lunge on this side, pressing up, hands at heart center. Nice and lifted, nice deep bend, pushing through the heel, stretching that hamstring. And then our twist on this side. So the elbow finds the thigh first. And then if the knee is bent and you want, you can slide that elbow down, turning and looking towards the ceiling, maybe putting a hand on the mat or you could find a block. And if you want, extending the opposite arm. So many options along the way. And then place that hand on the mat. And this time, step the right foot all the way forward and forward fold. Grabbing hold of opposite elbows, let your head go, let your back go, maybe some bounces, maybe some twists, whatever feels good. Releasing the arms, bending the knees if they're not already bent, and roll yourself up one vertebra at a time until you come to standing and then finding yourself so you can come to a balanced position so if you need to use the wall you can do that so we're going to do dancer but i'm going to offer you modifications along the way if you don't want to get into the full posture so i'm going to start on the right leg standing on the right leg and i'm going to bend the left knee and i'm going to grab my ankle so you can stay right here try to keep your knees more or less in line and you can definitely hold on to a wall. You can pull this foot up further towards your glute and get more of a stretch of your hip flexor. If you're stable and you want, you can extend that right arm up overhead. And then if you want to move towards the full expression of the posture, you start to lift that back leg, start to press your foot into your hand, and start to bring your gaze towards the ceiling. So a tiny hinge will happen, but you don't think about bending forward. You think about lifting that leg behind you and lifting your gaze in front of you. And hold here for three, for two, for one, coming back to center. And if you want, bringing that knee into your body, hugging it into your chest, releasing the back. It's actually a counter pose for the back position we just did. And then step, I'm too far forward on my mat, but sorry, I'm in the middle, you need to be more far forward. Step the left foot back. I'm just going to step a little bit forward. And we're going to transition to triangles. So the left foot is back at an angle. The front foot is pointing forward. Our hips and chest are square against the long edge of the mat. Arms extend, gaze out over that front hand. And now lean towards the front, reaching, reaching, reaching. You should start to feel a stretch here. Reach as much as you can. When you can't reach anymore, let that right arm dangle. Turn your gaze up and bring your gaze to the top hand. So traditionally, this is shown with the hand on the shin. I don't advise you do that because everyone ends up putting pressure on their knee 
and taking all the work out of their body. So I'd rather you just do it free form, but you can also put a hand on a chair or something that's about this height, or maybe you reach down to blocks on the floor. And press yourself up, reverse your triangle, hand comes behind your back, front palm flips up. Deep breath as you open up. Good, pivot towards the front of the mat, both toes, all ten toes, however many toes you have, pointing forward, feet are parallel, hinge forward from the hips, and release that all the way down, letting your head go, inhale, exhale, from here let's just bend the knees and straighten the legs, so bend your knees, bring your hands to the mat, and then straighten, maybe your hands lift off, and bend, couple more, pushing the hips back as you do this. Good. And then roll that all the way up. Pivot towards the other side of the mat, stepping up so you're near the top of the mat on that side. And now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to stand on my left foot. You can hold onto a wall, bend the right knee, catching the right foot or ankle. If you're stable, extending that arm. If you want, pulling that foot closer to the glute, giving yourself more of a stretch. And then only if you want, think about lifting up, kicking that foot into the hand, bringing your gaze towards the ceiling, opening the chest, an extension of the spine and opening the hip flexor. And then bringing that knee back, bringing it all the way forward, holding onto your shin, hugging it into your body. And then stepping that foot behind you, planting the foot on the floor at an angle, front foot, my left foot towards the top of the mat, arms extend, squeeze the shoulder blades together, looking out over the left hand, and we're going to hinge forward, forward, forward as much as you can. Release that arm down. Turn the gaze towards the ceiling as you look up towards the extended right arm. Breathing into this. And then pressing yourself back up. Right hand behind the back. Front palm flips up. Looking up towards the ceiling. Good, coming back around. Now facing the front of the mat, but keeping the toes turned out, cactusing the arms and coming down into our goddess pose. So hips push back, knees come over ankles, trying not to track out over our toes. Stay lifted here through the spine. And we're gonna stretch up and pull back down. So everything extends. Everything bends. We'll do three and two. Last one, bending the knees, coming up on the ball of one of your feet, just like we did earlier. Another stretch for plantar fasciitis or anything else for your foot, really. If you haven't had it, then this helps prevent it. Lowering that foot down, coming up on the other foot. Lowering that foot down, standing up, turning the feet parallel again, once again, folding forward. This time, maybe you grab your ankles, your big toes, see if you can pull the crown of your head more deeply towards the mat. If you want, you can take your hands and walk them back between your legs, placing the palms on the floor and see if that helps bring you a little bit closer to the mat. Walking the hands back out, turning the toes back out, bend your knees so your hands can find the mat, and make little lunges from side to side. Bending one knee, bending the other knee. You can keep doing our small lunges, you can pause, 
on one side. And if you want, you can take this deeper all the way down into Crouching Tiger. So it's a deep bend, opposite leg is extended. There are binds and such with this, but I just like to plant my hands to support me here. Trying to stay lifted, it's kind of hard. You'll find a lot of people find they kind of fall forward, so I like to use my hands to see if I can keep myself nice and lifted. And then use your hands to push yourself up over the other side. So again, you can just hang out here, not as deep a bend, or you can bend all the way down into that knee. I put one hand behind, one hand up front. As with many postures, I often say hands are extra credit. It often doesn't strictly matter where they are. Oh, it's tight on the side, my left hip. Always my tighter one. Good, and then using your hands again, push yourself back up to center. Let your head dangle as you heel toe your feet to just wider than hips distance. You can see where I'm going. Heels turning inward. And now you're gonna bend down into your deep squat. So again, if you have a block, a lot of you will find you need to sit on the block here. Ideally, you wanna sit up nice and tall. Turn so you can see my spine. So you wanna drop the hips and sit nice and tall. And so for a lot of us, that means sitting on the block is gonna be much better. If your heels don't reach the floor, that's okay. If they're lifting off the floor a little bit, don't worry about that. You can press your arms against your inner thighs. Bring the hands to heart center. And take some nice deep breaths. This is a really good posture. It's excellent for your digestion, digestion for your digestive system. Excellent for your hips, for your knees, for your inner thighs. Holding for a couple more breaths. All right, we're going to come out of this one more, probably one of our last hip stretches. You're going to bring your hands down to the mat and just come on over so you're on your knees. Step one knee off the mat. If you're on a harder surface or have like a and have like a shirt or a towel or something you can put under your knee, it actually super facilitates your frog pose. It's harder like I'm doing carpet on cloth. But we're gonna push the knees away from each other as much as you're able, bring your forearms down to the mat, and then sit back towards your heels. And you will notice it. You'll notice where you are. You're like, okay, yeah, I'm feeling the stretch. As I've said many times to y'all, my um, thighs, my inner thighs and my hips are not super open. So these postures are always really a struggle, but we just breathe through them. If this is bothering your knees, of course, you don't want to be having pain in your knees. So just adjust. Often you'll find you can just modify you can still do it, but maybe your legs are closer together. Maybe your knees need to be on a softer surface. Okay, and then bring yourself back up. And then bring yourself around, coming to a seated position. Sitting up tall towards the back end of your mat, flexing those feet. Inhale, extend the arms upward, lifting up, growing tall, tall, tall. This is a time if you want, you could grab a block. We're going to lower those arms down or anything lightweight. If you don't have anything, you're just arms in front. If you want, you can engage your arms by pressing against this block. Shoulders are down and back. Spine is lifted. Chin is towards chest. And we're going to do some spine stretch forward. So it's an inhale. As you exhale, you're trying to reach forward. You're pulling your belly button back. Your head drops between your arms. But it stays quite high. Your nose isn't anywhere towards your knee. You're rounded over. And then we're going to restack. We're going to pulse three times. We're going to pulse, pulse. Pulse. Inhale to sit back up. Exhale. It's like you're trying to pass that block to somebody and you just can't quite reach. Inhale to sit back up. And three, two, one. Inhale to sit back up. Last time. Exhale. Three, two, and one. And sit back up. I'm going to turn and face you because otherwise I'll hit the wall. Again, you can be doing this with or without the block. Your legs are just slightly separated, shoulders are down and back, belly is in. 
Inhale, exhale to twist, 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 little pulse. Inhale, back to center. Exhale to twist, 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 inhale to center. Last time you side. And to center, reach the arms up overhead. And release them down. Bring the block down if you had it. Bring one leg up. I'm going to do right leg. You can do either. Up into your inner thigh. So just like we did when we were on the mat. Keeping your hips forward. Releasing that knee down. Inhale to reach up. Exhale, coming across the extended leg. So you're really, you're kind of angling towards that side. And if you want, reaching the opposite arm and see if you can grab the ankle, the shin, the foot, wherever you are, releasing the head down. Take some nice breaths, breathing into the back, breathing into the hips. Feeling the knee, continue to release down. And bring yourself up. We're going to stay with the same leg extended. Option here to bend this knee and tuck it behind you. If it bothers your knee, so ideally what we want is to keep them at hips distance. But if this is bothering your knee, a modification is usually just to bring it out a little bit. If it isn't working at all, you can go back to the previous one or just extend both legs. But if you can, if it feels okay, it's actually quite good for the knee. Inhale up. Exhale forward. And you'll notice this one feels different. Like it always feels different on the on the leg that's extended, even though it's still the same extended leg. Changing the position of the opposite leg really changes it. Always on these stretches, try to flex your foot because that's going to give you more of a stretch in your hamstring. If your legs are tight and your knees are bent, don't worry about it. Just keep practicing it. And bring yourself up. So I'm going to give you one challenge option, uh, just challenging because it's a little bit pretzely. So with this leg bent where it is, bring the opposite leg, so mine's the left leg, and I'm going to bring it up on my thigh. See if you can then let this knee find the floor, which means you're going to hinge forward, which is fine. You're going to bring the right hand or the opposite hand, whichever one it is, across and put it under that knee. And then you're going to twist back to the other side. Then, if you're feeling real pretzely, you take this hand that's behind you and reach and see if you can grab your hip, or maybe you can even grab your foot. And at any step along the way, you can just be like, that's as far as I'm going to go with that. Y'all know I like to offer you little challenges. It's just a pretzel challenge. I don't know what this posture is called. I call it the pretzel. And come back to center. Release the legs. I'm sure it's the Sanskrit, like one leg up, twisted, upright posture, grabbing the foot. It would be very long in Sanskrit. Extend your opposite leg. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna extend the right leg. I'm gonna bring the left leg up. Releasing that knee down, flexing the foot. Inhale, we always want to lift to grow tall first and then reach for that extended spine coming across that extended leg, releasing down. Always thinking about lengthening those muscles. Taking some breaths here, again noticing if it feels different. I'm realizing I'm running out of time for Savasana, giving you so many juicy stretches. All right, and come on back up. Hopefully the whole practice was relaxing. And <laughs> bring that leg behind you, bending the knee. Knees in line with one another. Inhale, so this is my bad knee, and so I can feel this. Exhale forward. But that stretch, unless you've been specifically told not to, which some of you might have been, 
it actually can be quite therapeutic for those of us with knee problems. I don't have any problems per se, just pain in that knee. And a lot of us will have that as we get older. If you run, lots of things cause knee problems. And coming up, so pretzeling on this side is your option, bending that knee. So bringing the foot across the thigh. And then see if you can lean forward to bring that opposite arm across, hand under, and then begin to twist. So maybe you just come part way, maybe hand finds the block. Maybe you go more, maybe you can reach that hand around and grab your waist. And if you want, I am going to help myself here, grabbing the foot in the bind. down to for your shorts savasana holding onto the backs of your thighs rolling yourself down stretching your legs overhead stretching your arms no not that legs below arms overhead and bring your palms face up letting your feet flop open releasing that breath through your mouth closing your eyes and just taking a moment here to relax into the mat Long inhale, long exhale. Maybe coming back to that emotion, that intention, that thought for your practice, and letting it wash over your body. And from here, drawing your knees into your body, giving yourself another little rock from side to side. Allowing yourself to roll to one side, resting your head on your arm and pausing there for a moment, thanking yourself for your practice. And then gently, slowly, with your eyes still closed, pressing yourself up Finding a seated position, one leg crossed in front of the other, hands resting in your lap, maybe touching a thumb to a finger, forming a, forming a mudra with your hands. And take one last glance over your body, noticing your state of mind your state of body. Thanking yourself for practicing, for caring for yourself, for dedicating yourself to this time. And then inhale as you extend the arms up overhead, palms pressing together. Exhale, bring them down to heart center. Om Shanti Om. I wish you peace and Namaste.